Lakers drop to under 500 in a new report. Says they may also drop Darvin Ham. Well, what? That's unlikely. Didn't they right? just win the big tournament? I, I mean, yeah. three and they nine. They fired Vogel then. after a championship. They <laughs> might be the same uh, But it's Thursday at 4 o'clock, so you know what that means. It's oh, time boy. for the most motivational segment in all of sports. It's also time where we read some viewer mail for the year 2024. I thought it was going to fall off. I thought email was really going to take off. Turns out email. <laughs> Physical mail. Yeah. Back in a big way. Dear Wilds, love the show. Do you have any New Year's resolutions besides campaigning for Shingoon to be an all-star? Well, he has 330,000 votes. He needs to catch up there. Sincerely, Don Sr. Well, Don Sr., I have some sad news to share with you. The well of creativity must constantly be replenished. And sometimes you need to say, you know what? I got to throw away something to bring something new for the new year. Today will be our last show. With Cowboy Brew. I don't, I don't believe it. Unfortunately, I have not come up with a new idea. So I asked Dusty to make a sad montage as we say goodbye to Cowboy Brew and leave him as a franchise of 2023. Tune in next week where I will hopefully have a, an idea equally stupid. Is this because you yelled at everyone about us not doing photoshops anymore I so because of that, that is the they can't photoshop. do that photoshop? i said you know what if you're looking for change in the world you gotta start with the man in the mirror <laughs> okay and no more brew photoshop well there might be a photoshop but i don't might believe not, you might not be in a cowboy <laughs> i don't yet. believe you all, all right this. anyway okay. here we go at number three on the bud list two up oh. now people are saying wait they're in the playoffs yeah, where's the pressure on them yeah. First of all, Tua, congratulations. First Pro Bowl, I think well-deserved. And uh, also first completely healthy season. Yeah. So great work by you. Congratulations on that. But the work is not done, okay, because you have not been paid yet, my man. The bag is out there. And I got to be honest, I am. if I were running the Dolphins, I'm not fully convinced I'd be willing to give you five years, $275 million or whatever it's going to be. All right, I want to see another healthy season. I want to see another great season by you before I give up that money. However, the way to convince the Dolphins brass is what? A deep playoff run. Mm -hmm. You're right. A deep playoff run. And the best chance of you having a deep playoff run is to get the number two seed, which you need to do this weekend by beating the Bills. So, Tua, I rock with you. Rock with you. What is it? Does that is that just, better just, than just, believing? <laughs> it, I rock with you. You guys can decide. Oh, that. it's a break dancing thing. All right, at number, I missed it. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Wait, wait. At number two, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence. All right, now, Trevor, I, you may not remember – but the last time you were ensconced in a slump, I did you a favor, my man. No, I didn't bring out Bugle Boys. No, I didn't put on a blonde wig. No, I didn't give you a fancy nickname, The Prince. All I did was motivate you by putting you on the bud list. And what happened was he came out and balled. Yep. All right, after a pedestrian start to the season, I think the first game might have been Tennessee when you threw for two touchdowns and ran for two more. So I'm doing you a favor, my man. I'm like your guardian angel. All right? What? And I protect you with tough luck. All right, so here's some tough luck. You got to win. You got to get in the playoffs. I don't want to hear anything about injuries. You're playing the Titans. All right, they're one, two, three, Cancun at this point. So go out there and win. Get in the playoff. Trevor, I, I do believe it. Oh, you do. I, now look, I'd rather. I gotta be honest. I would rather see Houston and CJ Stroud in the playoffs. They can both get in. <laughs> CJ, if Houston wins, they're in. No matter what. All right. All right. So I, I, I believe in you, Trevor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. At number one, this is a, d a double. I didn't used to have to do this when I had five on the bubble, oh, but yeah, Wilds got wild. mad. I was getting too much time on the air. Anyway, Sean McDermott and Josh Allen. All right? And it's self-explanatory. Self-explanatory. Sean, you got to make the playoffs. Uh, you have got to make the playoffs. You got one of the best quarterbacks in the league, even if he didn't make the Pro Bowl. You got one of the best receivers in the league, even though he's been down a little bit the last few months since Stephon Diggs. And you've got maybe the biggest Super Bowl banner in your practice facility True. saying that's the goal. So you got to get to the playoffs. If you don't, 
Your job could be in jeopardy. If I was running the team, it would be. All right. So number now, Josh Allen. Uh, we obviously know you're not going anywhere. We're not trading you, but you are one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You gotta make the playoffs, my man. All right. So I I am impressed with your attitude over this last month. You've been winning games, and that's all you care about. You're not looking at, man, I'm throwing for 180 yards. Oh, man, I'm not throwing for touchdown. You don't care. I'm impressed. I'm dead serious. You're not forcing the ball to Stephon Diggs. Love it. So just keep the right mindset and do whatever it takes to win. If it costs with 20 passes and that's it, do that. Just play a clean, smart game and get in the playoffs and then anything can happen. Josh, I do believe in you. Sean, good luck. Oh, wow. Excellent, Bud Lister. Excellent. God, that is so good every week. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you Coach. Thank you put together pleasant <laughs> after pleasant. <laughs> It's fantastic. So I hard to top that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about your favorite villain, villain, Baker Mayfield. Oh. Okay, and and, and Nick's this, not going like this, this this game is very important to him, obviously. Chance to win the division. He's got a chance to have a better record than Tom Brady did. He has a chance to potentially be comeback player of the year. So all those things are, are incredibly important. But if there's a question as to whether or not he's gonna play, it's important for other reasons. He plays eighty six percent of the snaps, which he's at. A million dollar bonus. Oh, we, if oh, they make oh let's the, go. If they make the playoffs, a million dollar Ooh. bonus. And then if we can pull up this graphic, if he's either top 10 or top 5 in the NFC in any of these categories, which now everything in red he is, $300,000 each. Wow. $300,000, 600000 $1.2 million. Let's go, Ben. He's got shit. more than $3 million on the line. So right now he's got $3.2 million. If I don't think he can catch up in completion no. percentage. But his salary for the whole year is four million, and he's got three point two million sitting on this game wow. and his performance in this game. So Baker, I hope you hit it. Also, will they have to franchise you after the season? Well, exactly. Will you get a big contract? Yeah. Yeah. Franchise tag is worth thirty-five million. Big contract could be worth. Know if that's, that's good or not. That's is that good. pressure? So, I, that's yeah. real so, duress. Here you go. Really? You, you have a lot on the line, Baker. Oh. Good luck. That was good. That was excellent. That was, I, 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 that was excellent. That and I, real quick before I go, Rue, do you think right now the the Bucks are bringing Baker back? Because I do. I, even if it means they have to franchise tag him, yeah. I think they're bringing Baker back. I do. So I, I think do. he's going to get the you know the next year money. But the fact that he could double his salary for this year, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's really good. Um, all right, I'm putting show favorite, and you guys know it pains me to do this. I'm putting Nick Sirianni on the bud list, mm-hmm. and <laughs> yeah, you guys might motivated. say, Nick, you're uh, this is unfair. The, the, the guys, look at his record. Look at what he's done. He, he, you, you don't give him enough credit. Nick Sirianni goes on WIP every week, and I just want to give you a small taste of what Nick Sirianni, the defending coach of the, coach of the defending NFC champions, 11-win Philadelphia Eagles. It's a 15-minute spot, but I just want you to hear what he was asked to start the interview and then to end the interview, and you see if you think I'm putting him under too much pressure. Take a listen. All right, Nick, let's get to it here. Um, Are you concerned that you have lost the team? No, I'm not concerned about that. Are you worried about your future in Philly, that it may not last much longer unless the team plays much better soon? No, I don't. I don't think about those things. Okay then. So when the radio hosts on your paid weekly spot are asking you, "Hey, buddy, you getting you fired if this thing doesn't get turned around?" <laughs> then maybe I'm not the one being unfair, and you might say, "Well, those guys are crazy. His job's totally safe." Well, maybe in most places, but quick story. Andy Reid coached there for 14 years, made the playoffs nine times, had double-digit wins eight times, six division titles, five conference championship game appearances, went to a Super Bowl, had one bad year, out of there. Then Chip Kelly comes in. He went 10-6, and six, went 10-6 and six again. The third year, started 6-9, and nine, out of there before the end of the year. What about Doug Peterson? Well, he won the Super Bowl with a backup quarterback. Then the next year, made the playoffs and won a playoff game with a backup quarterback. Then the next year, made the playoffs again, and then he had a down year. Out of there. So the idea that Nick Sirianni could not, if this season ends as poorly as I think it's going to, start next year on the hot seat, 
Of course oh, he could. See that no. of, of course he could start next year on the hot seat. That's not my fault, Philly well, fans. That's the market, the team, and the history of coaching there. The way you said that, I thought you soft. Now, I'm not saying he'd get fired if they There's got no chance the he gets round. fired this year. But, but I, think he could start. I, I think it's definite he starts next season on the hot seat. Yeah. Like, if, if next year were to go the way this year, is trending? Yikes. Yeah, he, I, I would think that. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. going to take a quick trip to the NBA and put Giannis on. Giannis. Uh, yeah, Giannis on the butt list. The Bucks are 24 and 10. They're giving up 119 points. Played the Pacers last night and lost for the fourth time, and it's haunting Giannis. Take a listen. You have that, uh, and you think about it. Now when you go back home, and you sleep and you wake up, you think about it. Now when you go back and uh, work out, you think about it. When you're about to get freaky at night, you think about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, uh, Bucks ranks. Uh, when they won the championship, they had the fifth best offense and the ninth best defense. Nice little balance. Then they went and lost to the Celtics that year. Offense was great. Defense, not so great, so you lose to the Celtics. They're like, that doesn't work. We got too much offense, not enough defense. Let's flip it. <laughs> then you get the 15th best offense, the fourth best defense, be a real defensive team. Next thing you know, you lose to the Heat. It's like, all right, all right, we got to be better on offense. Now you, you put the uh, balance back on this side, you get Dame Lillard. Now you got the third best offense and the 21st ranked defense, and you're getting lit up by the Pacers because you don't play any defense. The Pacers also don't play any defense, but they seem to play more offense than you. <laughs> so, Brew, the question is massive, even though we have 60 seconds left in the segment. Is Are you confident that this Dame trade is going to yield a deep playoff run or a championship? I'm just saying deep playoff yeah, run. Yeah, I think it'll at least be a, a deep playoff run. Okay. But this is the thing with Dame, and we said it, we looked at it on the positive side when he went there, like, hey, this is great. He's already top 75. He's a Hall of Famer. Now he gets a ring. It, you know, it's going to raise his stature even higher. Well, on the flip side, if you go to a team with arguably the best player in the league that's already won a championship, the defense gets horrendous when mm -hmm. you're there. We know you weren't a great defender. And you do go out even in the second round, I think. You can't go out I think round. people will look at Dame – as a big part of the reason. Can I ask and it follow, hurt him just a follow up right now this moment. If this were to be round two, Bucks Pacers, are you picking Milwaukee no, when they've lost four or five to them? I've seen a lot of times where a team got dominated in the regular season and then beat that team in the playoffs. So I, I still probably would go with Milwaukee, but um, 140 